Today on the AI Breakdown Brief, why Salesforce's AI announcements at Dreamforce show where enterprise AI is headed. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today we kick off with a little bit of a review of Salesforce's Dreamforce conference, where, as you might imagine, AI was the big theme. Now, there were a number of announcements which we're going to talk through quickly, but I think that even more interesting than the announcements are what they tell us about the state of enterprise AI. Now, Salesforce first introduced an artificial intelligence layer that they called Einstein all the way back in 2016. In March, just a few months after ChatGPT came out, they introduced an updated version called Einstein GPT that, as you might imagine, basically allowed users to ask questions about Salesforce and natural language throughout the platform. And if Einstein GPT was Salesforce's first try at bringing generative AI across their entire suite of tools, Copilot is their next generation, and it goes a lot farther. Clara Shi, who's the CEO of Salesforce AI, said, We are launching Einstein Copilot, which is a conversational AI assistant for companies, employees, as well as their customers to securely and safely be able to access generative AI to do their jobs better, faster, more easily, and to augment and amplify their own abilities, their skills, their work, and be more efficient and be more productive. So basically, this is just a more advanced version of a chatbot that lives inside the Salesforce software. The examples that TechCrunch includes are a Salesforce researching new accounts, a newer customer service rep asking how to deal with a return over 30 days, and a product manager asking how to create a customized storefront for a new product launch. Now, one of the big advantages for Salesforce is that the Einstein Copilot can be connected to and powered by data that's actually coming from Salesforce's own data cloud which they introduced at their Dreamforce event last year called Genie. They also introduced something called Einstein Copilot Studio. And effectively, this includes three elements, a prompt builder, a skills builder, and a model builder. She further explained, the first piece is the prompt builder, and this is for customers who want to customize the prompt templates that have been included in Einstein GPT. The skills builder means that Einstein Copilot is now no longer just accessing your data and answering questions on the data. Companies also have the ability to control and designate which workflows they want Copilot to have access to and run. And finally, the model builder allows enterprises to bring their own model or use one of the supported third-party offerings from companies including Anthropic, Cohere, Databricks, OpenAI, and Google Cloud's Vertex AI. So it sounds like the model builder part of Copilot Studio is exploring similar space as something like Amazon's Bedrock. So taken all together, what does this tell us about the state of enterprise AI software? I think a couple things. First of all, it's more clear evidence that AI and generative AI specifically are going to be a part of a reimagined enterprise suite basically across every type of enterprise software that exists. Second, I think it shows that the farther into this we get, the more that these software companies are going to want to offer their customers customization opportunities. That can be very heavy customization, such as the model builder in Copilot Studio, or it can be the much more lightweight customization, such as the prompt builder. The point, though is that different enterprises are going to have different needs, and so a lot of the value proposition is in and around the tooling and customizability of these offerings. A third trend that I think the Salesforce announcement reinforces is just how well-positioned, frankly, existing B2B software providers are. Basically, because AI requires so much data, if an enterprise understands that the more data, including proprietary and private data, they give an AI model access to, the better results they're going to get, then when it comes to working with third parties, they're likely to prioritize companies that they already trust with their data, as opposed to, for example, brand new startups. It makes sense then that even these bigger companies are moving so, so fast to meet that demand because they just don't want to allow an inch for those enterprise customers to have to go look elsewhere for these new solutions. This is one of the first really big technological changes that could be distributed largely through existing businesses simply because they're working so hard to adapt as fast as they are. Now, one more note from Salesforce. In an interview on CNBC, CEO Mark Benioff talked a little bit about their plans for Slack and AI. Benioff said, quote, The big news is Slack is really starting to wake up with its own AI. It holds so much data for our customers. I think Slack is going to be the promise of AI for a lot of our most important customers. Now, obviously, any conversational medium like Slack is just an absolute trove of data. And so it's probably worth keeping a close eye on what Salesforce decides to ultimately do with all of that information living in Slack. Now, one of the things that has been notable so far with AI is that it hasn't really made it into the marketing hype cycle as, for example, NFTs and Web3 did a couple years ago. That apparently is starting to change, and Exhibit A is Coke's new Y3000 flavor, a Coca-Cola creation that is designed by artificial intelligence. Basically, Coca-Cola asked a number of humans to describe what they thought the future tastes like, 
and then turned it over to AI to determine what flavor pairings and profiles would work to capture that essence. Now, obviously, this is a gimmick. Obviously, this is just for fun. And of course, it's a good experiment for Coca-Cola to understand what new types of possibilities and differentiated thinking turning something like a recipe over to AI might produce. But it is notable as one of the first big examples of artificial intelligence in this post-ChatGPT world really being reduced to a marketing gimmick. Speaking of AI and marketing gimmicks, during NFL's Week 1 game between the Chargers and the Miami Dolphins, a number of patrons were surprised to see that they were surrounded not by other people, but by AI-powered robots. This was, once again, a marketing stunt designed to promote a new science fiction movie coming up from Disney called The Creator. The plot of The Creator is focused on a future war between humans and artificial intelligence, and given that the Chargers are a Los Angeles team playing in Los Angeles' SoFi Stadium, this does kind of seem like a natural place for a Hollywood promotion. Anyways, I think that to the extent that AI continues to be in the public eye, we can expect ever more AI-related marketing. Lastly today, the biggest thing happening in artificial intelligence in many ways today is Senator Chuck Schumer's Behind Closed Doors Summit that has secured the participation of some of the biggest names in AI and some of the most important big tech leaders to discuss alongside labor leaders and civil rights leaders the challenges and opportunities of the technology and what a good path forward might be when it comes to U.S. policy. But of course, that hasn't stopped some folks from coming in and saying that the whole thing is a bit of a sham. Elizabeth Warren, perhaps the politician least able to leave her priors at the door and engage with new situations from first principles, said, These tech billionaires want to lobby Congress behind closed doors with no questions asked. That's just plain wrong. This, of course, gave mainstream media a new angle to pursue as relates to the summit and run with it they did. Now, we are likely going to cover a lot more of what comes out of that event as we learn more. But just to get a sense of who is participating... We've got Sam Altman from OpenAI, Jack Clark from Anthropic, Clement, the founder of Hugging Face, Bill Gates, the former CEO of Microsoft, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, Alex Karp, the CEO of Palantir, Elon Musk, the CEO of Being Elon Musk, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google. And perhaps if it was just those CEOs, even if the optimistic or non-cynical take would be that this is a signal of the importance of this issue that so many of these people would change their schedules around to be in the same place at the same time, even if it was just those CEOs, it would be one thing, but it's not. Other participants include Tristan Harris, who's the co-founder of the Center for Humane Technology, who has been beating the drum around AI safety, Elizabeth Schuler, the president of the AFL-CIO, Meredith Stein, the president of the Writers Guild, Randy Weingarten, the president of the American Federation of Teachers, and Maya Wiley, the president and CEO of the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights. My two cents and my reminder to Senator Warren and anyone like her that's tempted to take an a priori cynical approach to anything relating to any company touching money or big tech is that this is too important an issue with too much significance for how society and the economy are going to develop to just make it a place to wage old wars and capture cynical sound bites. I am going to be watching closely for any hints of what comes out of this conversation, but I can't imagine a world that isn't better off for this conversation having taken place. That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.